जॉइन करना है तुम्हारा एक मिनट धर्मा मैम हेलो धर्मा मैम हेलो धर्मा मैम हूँ आप सर इजी है बिंदाले मैम हेलो हेलो हाँ गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर हेलो हेलो हाँ गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग मॉर्निंग सर हाँ मैडम नमस्कार सर ठीक नमस्कार नमस्कार सर बारह बजता एक अपन प्रोग्राम शुरू करूँगी एक्जैक्टली कई आर्टिकल नहीं कई आर्टिकल नहीं कई आर्टिकल नहीं माजी हाँ यस यस जयश्री मैम exactly yes ma'am four minutes we will start with our program yes yes Bindal, yes bindale ma'am she join us yes yes she is in the meeting only uh, bindale ma'am hello hmm. anshika are you there anshika yes ma'am i'm there yes yes we will start after four minutes two three minutes yes, sure. okay ha huh, you be there yes, जयश्री मैडम मेल चेक करा फिर तुम्हारा लिंक पाठ जयश्री मैडम यस आदित्य रिसीव हाँ मैं आली है ओके अंशिका स्वाद यस मॉर्निंग अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू वन एंड ऑल टुडे आई अंशिका गुब्रेले अ फोर्थ ईयर बीएलबी स्टूडेंट ऑन बिहाफ of bharatiya vidyapeeth dean to be university new law college pune's environment cell welcome you all in our webinar on impact of cryptocurrency on environment 
Before we move ahead with this engrossing session, I'm profusely overjoyed to welcome the keynote speaker for today's session, Advocate Pushkar Patil. I would also like to welcome Honorable Advocate Rajendra Uma, who is currently serving as the Vice Chairman for Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa. I further extend my greetings towards our Honorable Dean and Principal, Dr. Ujwala Bendale Ma'am, all the learned faculties of our college, friends from student community, and all those who have joined us for this webinar through the digital space. Now, it is my honor to introduce Honorable Advocate Rajendra Uma. Sir is currently serving as the Vice Chairman for Bar Council of Maharashtra and Goa, and also he is the trustee at Chinchwar Devstan's Trust. Sir is also serving as the secretary at Vikas Pratishtan Chandan Nagar Haveli District, Pune, and is the chairman of Life Care Foundation. Sir has also served as the vice chairman for All India Handloom Board, Ministry of Textiles, Government of India, from the year 2008 to year 2010, and was the former president at Pune District Bar Association from year 2013 to 14. Sir, we welcome you in our webinar. Thank yes, you. This moment is special for two very specific reasons. Anshika, Anshika. Anshika one minute. Uh, before you begin, uh, I would like to welcome Advocate Rajendra Umar, sir. Sir, welcome. And I'm, Thank you. Uh, I'm so glad that you have, uh, on a very short notice, consented to come. And uh, I also welcome Advocate Pushkar Patil. Thank you so much for your Thank presence. you, madam. Thank you, madam. Your Thank word you is very important. Particular. If you remind me for this program, that's Thank very you. good. Thank, Thank you, you. ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anchika, you can start. Thank you, ma'am. Friends, this moment is special for two very specific reasons. Firstly, that this event is being conducted on a very important topic related to cryptocurrency. And secondly, to explain its basic implications and various dimensions, we are joined today by a towering figure in the field of law, Advocate Pushkar Patil. Advocate Pushkar Patil is currently a practicing advocate in Pune District and Sessions Court and has represented various matters across the state of Maharashtra. Sir has completed his BSL LLB degree from ILS Law College Pune in 2013 and simultaneously studied diploma in corporate law from Bharti Vidya Peet New Law College Pune. He has also studied diploma in housing laws from ILS Law College Pune. He also pursued LLM in commercial corporate law from University of Glasgow, Scotland. Sir has also appeared as a guest lecturer for various significant issues such as cyber crimes, domestic violence law, cryptocurrency, women laws, etc. And he has been constantly active in raising awareness for legal rights for all citizens. Sir, we welcome you to this webinar. May we kindly request you to address the gathering. A very warm thanks to all the organizers of Environmental Sale of Bharti Vidya Peet New Law College. And uh, very warm thanks to uh, Ujwala Bendale, ma'am, who I guess we discussed the topic earlier and uh, she was very keen to have me on this uh, guest lecture. So before I begin with my lecture, I also want to thank Rajendra Humab, sir, because uh, on la in the last month when the elections were confronting, we had a discussion on the topic of uh, crypto. And uh, he was also pretty keen to understand actually what exactly cryptocurrency holds for us. So uh, I thanks all of you to have me on this uh, lecture and I'll begin with my lecture. Uh, if you may kindly share the screen that uh, PPT that I have shared. So it will be yes, convenient yes, for all of us to understand. Yes, yes. So yes. just you say uh, next if you want to. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll, I'll convey the message. Yeah, so I believe everybody is looking at the PPT on the screen. Uh, can we move to the next 
next image please yes so uh, before i start on the topic as to why exactly the cryptocurrency has a impact on environment i want to raise a certain small topic that is required as in it is not a topic that should be technically be here on this occasion but it is just a brief background that it is essential to share with all of you uh, humans since the beginning of their birth they are been denoted as the smart species who has the capacity of thinking uh, and eventually if you uh, go into the past the humans have known for creating languages interacting with each other joining communities bringing communities together collaborating with the communities transacting within the communities this formula has been going on for centuries and that formula we can say that uh, it is a biological formula now we as a humans we are constantly engaged into accepting change or uh, contemplating change what once was used as a currency could be once now used as a commodity the factor that why i am focusing main on humans is because that we humans are just tenants in this world there is no fixed time of our tenancy so since our birth as a citizens of this world we owe responsibility to this planet earth which everybody knows that it is degrading if it wouldn't have been degrading there wouldn't have been concerns of climate change now whether this cha- climate change concerns are been addressed worldwide now that is also a big question because see every country wants their currency to go up because that is how uh, their country is going to grow economically but every time when a country is growing it is keeping aside the very basic concern as to climate change now even i travel in a two wheeler i travel in a car everybody of us is traveling in a car we all are technically the culprits that we are actively engaged in destroying this planet that is no doubt but now once again we do not have other sources and probably as lawyers we cannot do much about what the technology holds for us but then what is our responsibility in our basic minimum capacity as lawyers we have to first ourselves address to our own self our own conscience that we are humans we have a responsibility towards this mother earth and we have to spread the message that even if we are not able to control it we have to use sources of sustainable growth so that the generation that comes after us has something to grow ahead and the cycle keeps on running as i said there, there is no specific time limit for our lives uh as we all have seen what the corona period has brought in for us a healthy person actively engaged in sports at the age of 25 26 the very next day he is admitted and the only reason is lack of oxygen now that oxygen is exactly why is essential to keep the earth moving now as i have mentioned in the ppt as you all can see we humans are just tenants without a fixed time of departure so you must always remember we are not permanently here so even if we are engaged in any sort of business and we want to be rich personalities we want to grow ahead there has to be a limit because we have to always keep in mind that we owe a responsibility to this mother nature now as humans have grown the concept of communication has grown the concept of transactions have grown so i request ma'am to turn on the next slide please so Uh, as you can see i have mentioned about the past present and the future of currency what it holds so initially when human kind was growing uh, everybody is already aware about the barter system say if one is into making pots he will exchange the pottery in exchange of food so if anybody is into fishing he'll exchange the fish in exchange of a boat so that was a barter system there was no specific value of a product because that is how the humans as a, as a uh, citizens of this world have grown now this ev- evolution has taken a big time to grow and that it is not a case that now barter system is introduced now after one month the currency was introduced it has taken generations several generations and somebody a group a commodity humans together have come up with a procedure where this barter system was slowly cut down and it came to be exchanged as physical currency now initially also after the barter system the physical currency was different con- uh, considering different communities so if one community could be exchanging in indigo there could be some com- commodity who could be dealing in fish because that were the sources 
so we have as humans evolved from barter system to physical currencies now at present if you have seen the history initially the exchange medium of currency was from the beginning initially was gold now slowly the gold had started increasing its value then the gold became silver then silver became brass then brass became steel and at present we are in a situation where the coins are used in a combination of several mixtures of steel iron ore minerals and the currency notes where initially they began to be uh, a mixture of plastic and uh, paper now the uh, it has grown as in singapore if you can see they have the plastic notes as in they are using uh, petroleum technology to make the notes by use of plastics so eventually what was once used as a currency the gold coin has now become a commodity what was once used silver as a exchange medium of exchange is also now a commodity it is used as an investment so there is every possibility that as we humans develop from here in and we go into the future there could be a possibility that eventually steel iron ore and even plastic can become a commodity in future uh, there could be a possibility that the next generation might just see the plastic as a commodity as a investment but we don't know that because eventually everything that this earth holds is limited and the society as a humans every government of every country has to come up with an idea where we don't run out of the general resources as in the available resources so once when the gold's value is increased it is now so so costly that a common middle class man thinks a hundred times before buying it that could happen with the physical currency which is now we are actively exchanging so there is a possibility that the easiest way to introduce an alternate currency in the future would be a digital currency which already we are trading in or a cryptocurrency now this is where the history comes barter system slowly growing to the commodity as to the present currency and now entering into the future where there could be an absolute digitalization where people will not use the physical currency they will transact through online everything will be digitalized and the medium of exchange could be units or could be anything which the world decides now we are entering into the phase of globalization so it is to be seen the future what future holds for us uh, i request ma'am to turn on the next slide please yeah so uh, now as you can now as, as i discussed earlier that gold is now used as a commodity now consider this idea that any business that comes into the market now why this topic is relevant to cryptocurrency i'll explain it later every business idea a person who wants to start a business now these are the basic ideas what holds the growth of business as in you introduce the product you publicize it because if you do not publicize a product nobody is going to buy it now if you introduce a product you publicize it now you want to grow the business you need investors so you put out attractive offers to buy the product so if i am launching a device and uh, how do i tell the world that i have introduced a device by publicizing it now i publicize it few people purchase it now i want to grow the business i want to introduce a technology in it so i invite investors so that is how the business works now once the investors have come in now i want many people to have an idea about my product so what i will do is i will keep advertising it positively keep advertising it now once this advertisement flows and if my product is going good doing good then there will be supply and demand now whatever the demand is if i if i get a demand of 10 products in the market and my supply production is of six products now that is again going to raise my value because this will increase the value of my product the product which i was selling at rupees 10 but since my dev production is slower i will need more funds to put into it now this chain is entirely based upon this supply of supply and demand now you will get to know ahead why supply and demand is the main theory of this today's lecture then how are the strategies to stay in demand now tomorrow if i uh, give a product which is faulty and a person comes to me and tells me that you have given me a faulty product i want to get it replaced i will provide him the facility of giving him the product with a newer technology as in an advanced product without charging him a additional cost now the message will go in society that i am providing better services 
now this is a strategy to stay in demand then i will only show the positive side so in my production if uh, while making any product if an injury happens to the laborer i will not openly publicize it because nobody wants their business to go down so that is the strategy simple strategy we as lawyers need to understand what happens behind the wheel of a business so these strategies do not usually come into the open unless and until of course the media covers it then uh, use of social media so what i will do is now in order to grow my product i will publicize it on social media and i will directly or indirectly as in now how this indirect theory works i will tell people to share their experiences i will hire eminent personalities actors bollywood actors i'll tell them to uh, as in keep advertising my product in such a way that many people who are there for us will also invest in my business so most of the times this is a business strategy i can also give a paid opportunity to eminent personalities to speak on my product because that again becomes an uh, indirect advertisement the more the demand being raised by a eminent personality the more his followers are going to blindly follow into investing or either purchasing my product so this is a modern day business growth formula this basic these are basics there could be many these are just basics to uh, for all the students to understand uh, can you ma'am please turn on to the next slide yes please so at present we'll focus on the three types of currencies that we can see one is the physical currency that is the money you have as in in hand cash in hand it could be a 100 rupee note 500 rupee note a coin 20 now as you all can see a 20 rupee rupees coin is introduced so these all coins and currency that you are holding physical currency is the rupees dollars etc this is a physical currency you transact by currency you get your product that, uh, with you this is a physical currency the value of this physical currency does not change a 100 rupee note will remain a 100 rupee note that is the physical currency you can touch the physical currency you can see the physical currency and you can also exchange this physical currency directly for the same value of what that note or coin is now there is digital digital currency now this digital currency is that amount that we hold in our banks now if you are holding a 1000 rupees in your bank that 1000 rupees in your bank is the digital currency and that is going to remain 1000 if you do not transact anything so you want to trade that amount in exchange of purchasing a product you will spend that amount as in you purchase a product of 100 rupees you have 900 left in your account now it can be e wallet or bank account anything but you exchanged or you transacted the exact amount now this digital currency amount value will also not change that means what amount you are physically holding you have just invested it or uh, as in uh, deposited it in your bank account or e wallets now there comes this cryptocurrency this cryptocurrency is basically uh, you, you first purchase dollars from usa as in you exchange now we will keep the topic limited to india you spend your rupees you purchase dollars and from dollars you purchase cryptocurrency and you keep that cryptocurrency in your e wallets now we will discuss what is a crypto e wallet ahead now this is like a live stock trading as in if you buy a cryptocurrency now as you all know that bitcoin is a famous one so if you buy 100 units of bitcoin now you at present have 100 units of bitcoin and tomorrow if you trade 2 units and you have left 98 but now overnight the demand increases for the bitcoin your 98 units can go to 102 or they will come down to 9, uh, 96 so there is a fluctuation it is not constant this currency is not physical currency uh, ma'am can you just take back a little moment that on the topic yeah so it is like a live uh, like a stock trading as in today if that value is like uh, 98 rupees there is a possibility that after 5 days is the market crashes it could go down to zero but it is not a fixed uh, currency it is fluctuable so that is what is cryptocurrency is it is more like a stock trading uh, now the next window please 
yeah so before uh, discussing this cryptocurrency there have been a history of digital currencies now all these digital currency ideas that i have given is david chom introduced a digital cash app named it digi cash but that idea miserably failed because he was into the same concept where people would invest in their account would purchase the digi cash out of their physical currency that means they will purchase a digital currency who will act as per the stock market as in if you invest 100 rupees and that 100 rupees values goes up to 102 you have 102 so that this digi cash idea is more or less like a cryptocurrency but this idea collapsed as in the plan was flop people could not understand the idea and in 1998 he had to file a bankruptcy so this is a time period of 1983 to 1998 so as i discussed earlier what future holds is absolutely uncertain what at present present moment we are looking at crypto as a glory can also just fade away like a boom so now coming to the 1996 us government also introduced their e gold coin the amount that you hold in your account was equivalent to that of the gold that is in market but then this idea also failed because gold as you have seen it will either directly go to the higher costs or it will come down to a lower cost gold as we have seen has not lowered as in many years but this idea also failed because not many people liked it and as we belong to india we treat the gold purchase as a dead investment as in nobody wants to sell the gold that they have purchased because we have the traditional value for gold so in usa not many people are attracted to commodities such as purchase of gold so that idea also collapsed and that entire plan was shut down by the usa government in 2008 and then came the paypal in 1998 paypal is like a paytm app it is a digital cash what you hold physically you put in your wallet now that is the wallet e wallet the first introduced e wallet so this is basically a digital currency so pretty safe to deal with like a paytm account so it is still in uh, exchange it is still in operation and then in 2009 came the bitcoin now many people are uh, keen to know what exactly this bitcoin is and how it has come into picture uh, so ma'am can you turn to the next slide please now uh, this bitcoin is a cryptocurrency it is not a physical currency you cannot see a bitcoin as we discussed regarding the market strategy business strategy i will create an advertisement the bitcoin has come up with an advertisement of a gold coin with a b written on it and a two arrows on it like a dollar now this is a marketing strategy now one point is stick i introduce a product i advertise it i find investors because that is an attractive coin and believe me at some point of time we all have wanted to get that coin only for show piece no even if you say no there is every a uh, possibility that we wanted that coin because i surely did want that coin in 2009 when i first checked that introduction on facebook as an advertisement so it basically cryptocurrency is a decentralized currency now what is a centralized currency and what is a decentralized currency rupee a rupee that we are operating a currency physical currency is a centralized currency whereas a digital currency although not directly centralized but it is a government intercepted and government observed regulated amount that means the physical currency digital currency are both centralized currencies a cryptocurrency is not a centralized currency no government owns cryptocurrency no single person is the absolute owner of cryptocurrency the person who purchases the cryptocurrency becomes the sh- becomes the shareholder and as we all know as per the company law every shareholder is the owner of company so this is like a decentralized company there could be a stakeholder higher stakeholder of purchaser of a big bit uh, cryptocurrency but he is not the absolute owner although he will have the veto power as in he if he sells the bitcoins higher capacity the price of the bitcoin could go down but then he is not the absolute owner that responsibility is on each holder of the cryptocurrency so this is basically a decentralized currency so you purchase a cryptocurrency you keep it on your computer your computer is part of the ownership of that cryptocurrency secondly it is a privacy absolutely private as in if i want to purchase something and i do not want the government to interfere or say uh, want to know what i have purchased because see 
क्रिप्टो करेंसी डज नॉट फॉर फॉर कंट्री लाइक इंडिया वील डिस्कस द टॉपिक अबाउट इंडिया वेन एवर वी परचेस एनी प्रॉपर्टी हैविंग द वैल्यू ऑफ फिफ्टी थाउजेंड एंड अबाउ फोर्टी नाइन थाउजेंड नाइन हंड्रेड अबाउ वी हैव टू लिंक आर पैन कार्ड और वी हैव टू इश्यू अ कॉपी ऑफ आर पैन कार्ड while purchasing cryptocurrency it is not mandatory as in no because there is no involvement of government because it is a decentralized currency so it directly makes it a private currency as in it maintains your privacy so if tomorrow a friend of mine is going to sell me a sports bike and uh, if i want to purchase the sports bike for say 1 lakh rupees it is mandatory upon me as per the regulations of the rbi and the income tax laws in india that i furnish my pan card but through cryptocurrency i will transfer the funds up to a valuation of 1 lakh rupees but i do not have to furnish my pan card and that amount that i transfer into that person's account the seller of the bike that transaction will have a unique transaction code that is a data and this will be stored in electronic ledgers and this electronic ledger will be stored in all the computers of the shareholder of this cryptocurrency so it is like no government involvement but it will be there in all the computers and this transaction code is absolutely encrypted that is why the word comes cryptocurrency encryption hidden that meaning is hidden this entire transaction is discreet so i am pretty sure that you all know when we purchase something as in if i purchase a property i have to pay the tax i have to pay the stamp i have to pay the gst i have to pay the state taxes once this transaction is discreet who is going to ask me about the taxes nobody so this is the privacy this is the encryption uh, as already discussed the non involvement of government or third party so by uh, now how this cryptocurrency works it is by used by a cryptic method now this cryptic method is a private method as in discrete method now uh, as i said the ledgers that i happened as in i purchase the bike from a seller i transfer him the cryptocurrency from my wallet to his wallet he, that transaction entry is a ledger e ledger that ledger will be stored in a block now this block is also digital as in computerized now this block is of 1 mb capacity and all the ledgers that take place randomly amongst all the shareholders of people using cryptocurrency this ledgers will be stored in that block once that block is full sha256 procedure of you uh, calculating the hash value will be used and a block will have a unique hash value of 16 digits now this 16 digits are a hexadecimal now what is hexadecimal uh, numerically we only have 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 so that is basically 10 words 0 is also a numeric so that will that is only 10 words but what is hexadecimal hexadecimal will go beyond that as in a b c d e and f only till f so uh if you I, if anybody can see my screen i'll show you how that number is if i can zoom in as in it's uh, it's technically not possible here here but if you can see that number 16 digit number is uh, 000011 ff ed 03970 so basically i will be using as in the hash value will be calculating a hexadecimal number which will have 0 to 9 and a to f not beyond that and this numbers can be mixtures as in it could be f could be at the beginning f could be at the back that i don't know that is the procedure of the computers and that is the procedure of applications and that is not the topic of discussions so i will not draw the attention of all the crowd to that perspective at this moment but this hash value is used as in is it is calculated by using the application sha256 so that is what we have to remember because it, it is a 16 digit hexadecimal number now a block that has taken place which has the entries of all the ledgers amounting to 1 mb this block will have its hash value calculated that hash value will have a unique number so any time you access a block 
you can get its hash value. But if you only have the hash value, you cannot find the block from the hash value. So the transaction cannot go reverse. So these blocks coupled together are called as blockchain. So this is blockchain technology is used. So once you have cleared what blockchain is, all these transactions, blockchains, it is what technology used for holding cryptocurrency and operations of cryptocurrency. Now, all the computers, as I said, who, who are shareholders and who have accounts in this uh, cryptocurrency uh, businesses are all the owners of this cryptocurrency. And so if tomorrow one computer gets crashed amongst 10 computers, one computer gets crashed that data of that transaction will still be safe in rest of the nine computers so basically whatever data is being recorded is in the computer in an encrypted manner which cannot be intervened by any government no traceability of any transactions but all the investors are the owners so i hope the idea of how crypto works is basically clear to all of you ma'am can we go to the next window yeah so uh, as I said, it is a private currency, encrypted currency, absolutely discrete, no involvement of government. Now, these are the concerns that take place. These discrete, discrete transactions, and it has come to four, and as Rajendra Umaf sir would also agree with me, the uh, cryptocurrency is now used in crimes like prostitution, terrorism, uh, human trafficking, which are seriously concerning because the investigating agencies that we have in India are not that adequately capable, or we can say that not advanced to track down these transactions. So this is the first concern of cryptocurrency. Uh, third, I already uh, covered that the, it does not have a track record, as in if tomorrow I transact through e-wallet, I transfer an amount and tomorrow I delete my e-wallet and I sell off all my bitcoins, there will be no traces left. As in, I have exited from the account and there is no history that I was ever a part of this transaction. So that is also alarming. Now, uh, as I said, the investigating agencies are not that highly uh, as in uh, capable of uh, finding out these such transactions. It actually depends that are examinations that are administrative examinations that are taken that are taken on education platform which are open portals as in mpsc upsc we do not hire a, a what we say a, exactly in that field as in if we want somebody to uh, catch a fraud we need an it technician but that it technician must first give the mpsc and upsc because for him to be an authorized administrative agent he requires that degree to do that job but we are not that much capable so the concerns are being tracked of course the police machinery does take help from the external sources who provide the it services but then once again now it it remains to be questionable now it will challenge the constitution of india because right to right of an accused says that that investigation must always be done by an authorized agent now since these persons who come from the outside area as in third party providers whether they can be said as authorized now that is also a defense for the criminals so this is basically these are the concerns of cryptocurrency and cryptocurrency please note has the power to collapse the governments because if i transact in cryptocurrency and i do not pay my taxes then how will the government run because the government and the administrative machinery entirely runs on taxes of people even though the government creates new money every time, the more the money comes in the market, the lesser the value it has, uh, it gets. As in uh, today, if you all can see, the dollar is the most powerful currency. They have reduced the, uh, as in creating new dollars because that is how their value increases. So if the government keeps on making more currency for them to work, that is going to uh, cause a dent in our economy. So that is why these are the concerns of cryptocurrency. If people stop paying taxes and entirely start transacting into cryptocurrency, then that is going to hurt our economy. Uh, Ma'am, can you go to the next window, please? Yeah. So at present in the market, as you all can see, these are the currencies that are available. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, Binance coin, USD coin, 
Ripple, Shiba Inu, Dogecoin, uh, Tesla has been dealing into these both coins and they have also stopped doing it now. Now there are approximately 6,000 other cryptocurrencies at present operating in the entire world. And there are websites for cryptocurrencies who operate like stock market websites and their value you can see in real time. So as you all be knowing that Bitcoin being the leader, I will be focusing mainly on Bitcoin to avoid any confusions. Now can we go on the next window please? So these are the e-wallets in which you can store your cryptocurrencies. Now, as I told earlier, how to purchase that coin? You will first purchase dollars. And how you will purchase the dollars? By installing this app, you will invest your money from your bank account in this wallet. Then from that money, you will first purchase dollars. And then from that dollars, you will purchase the cryptocurrency. Now for uh, limited purpose, let us say Bitcoin. Now, if one Bitcoin at present is 30 lakh rupees, so the units that you want to buy, you can buy 0 0.001 unit, 0 0.002 unit, 0 0.003 unit. So that is how you buy that uh, dollar value that you have in your e-wallet, you will purchase the equivalent value of the cryptocurrency. So that is how you get that coin in your crypto wallet. Now, there is no bar that at uh, how many cryptocurrencies you can hold. You can hold as many cryptocurrencies as you want. You can hold multiple different cryptocurrencies in one e-wallet account. But subject to that e-wallet must support that cryptocurrency. So if I, if I am residing in India and maybe Ripple is not available in India, so I will not be able to buy that coin. Your app must support it. Uh, Ma'am, can we go to the next one? Now, speaking about Bitcoin, it is the first cryptocurrency introduced in 2009. Now, this was introduced by a pseudonymous developer whose name is Satoshi Nakamoto. Now, the very operation of a business is made by a developer who we do not know. Now, as lawyers, as in suspicious uh, defense lawyers, we should always tell, ask ourselves, who introduced this? Who introduced this? Now, it, this is a data available on public portal, but we don't know who this Satoshi Nakamoto. We don't even know whether he's a real person, a fake person, a company, a ownership. We do not know anything. Now, he introduced this concept of Bitcoin. Now, we have, again have to go back to the theory of business strategy. Introduced a product, advertise it. Now, he has introduced a product, advertised it. We don't even know if he is a female or she may look female. So uh, he introduced 21 million Bitcoins. That is equivalent to 2.10 crore coins. 2.10 crore coins, not rupees. This one Bitcoin at present could have a value of 20, 30 lakhs. So that multiplied by 2.10 crores. So that is the exact value of Bitcoin that will ever be circulated in open market. Now, out of which already 19 crore Bitcoins are already in the world. Now, only 2.3 point, uh, as in 2.10 crore are left. Now, out of this entire 2.10 crore coins, 9.80 lakh Bitcoins are owned by this pseudonymous developer, Satoshi Nakamoto, who has chosen to be remaining as anonymous. But then again, what he has done very beautifully, he has strategized that it is like a company. Every shareholder is the owner. Every computer will have the ledger entries without any involvement of government. That means if tomorrow, definitely, if Satoshi Nakamoto sells the coins, that coins will still remain because it is an open platform, open portal, no government, no regulation, no interference of any third party. All the shareholders are the owners. But then the question will always remain, who holds it? As in, who is the director of this Bitcoin? The questions are still not answered. So uh, as of now, uh, as you can see, till March 2020, he owns 9.80 lakh Bitcoins. Uh, Ma'am, can we go to the next page? Yeah. So there are two ways of being a owner of Bitcoin. Now, how are this? Now, it, it is not limited to Bitcoin. Please note. This is uh, the exact procedure of all the cryptocurrencies. Some cryptocurrencies are only till 1 crore. Some cryptocurrencies are only till 10 lakhs. Some cryptocurrencies are only till 5 lakhs. And if they want to circulate more amount, then this Satoshi Nakamoto will have to come up with more coins. So that is the strategy. Now, how to own a Bitcoin? One is proof of stake, as in you directly purchase in your e-wallet. 
whatever you own 0.0001 unit yes possible no doubt now another way of owning a bitcoin is by use of computers and we called it crypto mining remember that for mining does not mean that you have to take uh, as in uh, uh, you have to take some multiple uh, tools with you and start digging the ground it is not like that it is by way of use of computers now if i wanted to do a crypto mining for the purpose of work as in to show that i have been mining in 2009 if this started it was sufficient for me to mine from my mobile phone in 2009 because at that time the maximum ram that my mobile phone had was up to 1 gb but then investors started coming in more and more people started investing more and more people started opening their crypto farms farmings as in many computers at one place all computers engaged in mining so because of this what happened they had to increase the difficulty level of mining because if that difficulty level was not there then anybody can easily earn the coin now how this mining works now there are two transactions your computer if you are engaged in mining has to do the guess work of that hash value which could be imagined as in which could have been come hash value of that block now in 2009 only 16 characters were sufficient to guess the hash value now that value has gone to 10 into 19 zeros hash value as in at present 64 words more than 64 74 70 words that is the hash value now who does this guess work now it is like a lottery system it is not like you have to guess the 64 digit number your computer and the applications as in asic application specified integrated system does the work for you it guesses 74 64 74 uh, guess work of hash values that could be the value of a block taking place in order to show the proof of work and any computer who guesses more or less to that hash value more or less not not just less lesser than the hash value he gets that coin now this coin having a value of 20 to 30 lakhs imagine how many people are doing crypto farming for that one coin whose value is 30 lakhs now business strategy it is more like a video game or we are all are engaged online to win this coin keeping aside the entire uh, uh, concern of how much energy we are wasting for that coin for getting that one coin of rupees 30 lakhs all the world engaged in crypto mining is using the electricity equivalent to the entire years electricity of countries like denmark and finland now who is addressing the issue you are then again as we have to again go to the business strategy show what is positive cryptocurrency in 2009 was only 1 lakh now it is 30 lakhs but what about this drawback not every person who is engaged in mining or crypto farming is going to get the coin that is a speculation as in it is a lottery and there is no as in no confirmation that once you engage 100 computers you will get that coin no there is no assurance now this gpu as you can see by using computer cpu and gpu this gpu is the graphic processor unit as in the more powerful your gpu is the more uh, guess work your computer will do mathematical guess work you do not have to do anything you just have to engage your computer's energy towards the guess work the more guesses your computer does the more chances you have of winning as in it is like this for one lottery that is going to as in one person who wins a lottery is going to get 100 rupees so what people do people buy 10 lottery tickets of 10 rupees each and at the end of the day what are you getting 100 rupees then why are you wasting 100 rupees so people are not getting this perspective what the strategy of this business is show what is positive 
Bitcoin in 2008 was one lakh rupees. Now it is 30 lakh rupees. That is the business strategy which I personally feel. Uh, so these are the two ways of owning a Bitcoin. One is by purchasing, another is by proof of work. In proof of work, if I have five computers and I want to increase my guesswork, what I will do is I will start cloud mining. Now there have been several scams of cloud mining where people invite you to join their system and their system will use the energy of your computer now there has been a, a case that uh, i had confronted a person in kondwa uh, took the property on rent a flat in order to make this crypto farming and he literally engaged 30 computers in his uh, rented premises and on 29th day of the uh, as in when his agreement was uh, ending he ran away with all the computers the electricity bill that owner received was about 20 lakh rupees so you can imagine what energy we are wasting uh, man can we turn to the next page please yeah so now as i said for a 100 rupee lottery the world is buying 10 tickets of 100 rupees now imagine one day's use of electricity for the cryptocurrency throughout the world is equivalent to one year's electricity used by countries like Denmark and Finland. One year energy we are wasting behind a coin whose value is 30 lakhs and which is equivalent to the energy of one year. Second is the emissions of carbon. We are using the electricity. This electricity majorly comes from the use of coal, fossil fuels. So only 25% of the energy that the entire world at present has, it's coming from other resources such as windmill, tidal energies, etc. But 75% is absolutely being used as coal. Any plant, tree or wood to convert into a fossil fuel down the earth is going to take millions of years to do it, do that naturally. Now, if that energy is being used in one day, and imagine the consequences that we are releasing because any electronic device that we are using or the resource of energy that we are using is going to emit something which is not only dangerous to the environment but it is a waste of energy now again i have to draw the attention of the crowd to the first point i said we as humans have a responsibility of sustainable growth now does it look like a sustainable growth to you now that is the question that you have to ask yourself now, coming to the concerns of climate change, already the governments are working hard on entirely converting the vehicles to electronic operations. Now, okay, you are on the point that you are going to say fuel, diesel, and now you are going to convert into electricity. But where will you get that electricity from if the entire world is engaged on a concept of mining? If you all have been following the news, not a month ago, maximum a month ago, India was falling short of coal. Imagine the consequences if tomorrow this 75% of coal source diminishes and disappears. What will you do with this cryptocurrency when you do not have anything to store it? How will your computer run? How will your vehicles run? How will your mobile phones get charged? Nobody is questioning these concerns because it is all about a business strategy show what is positive now next is uncertainty of nakamoto now why this is an uncertainty in trade if tomorrow nakamoto once we as we all know once the value of a product increases and people start selling it the market crashes it is like a supply demand and supply the more the demand the more the value the lesser the demand the stakeholders are at higher risk of losing their value. So if tomorrow this pseudonymous personality Nakamoto decides to sell his 9.80 crore bitcoins, which at present he's the absolute owner of, this market will crash. There is also one possibility. When the cryptocurrencies are uh, as in uh, circulating in the market and if tomorrow the value of cryptocurrency has started decreasing as in there is demand and there is supply as in i demand 10 coins there are 10 coins so the value is not going to increase because i am providing that supply so what these people do another business strategy 
they burn the coins this process is called burning of cryptocurrency how they burn it by automated devices what they do they transfer some of the bitcoins to a wallet from where these cryptocurrencies will never be used in the market that means fake demand creating fake demand now this is legalized by several governments because to maintain the stability in market because if the value of bitcoins fall several people will undergo losses and then nobody will buy bitcoin so this is the business strategy so you have that is why i first shared with you why the business strategy plays a important role behind the concept of cryptocurrency now these are all the concerns that need to be addressed uh, ma'am can we go to the next slide please now now considering this entire scenario what is the steps taken by the government of india as of now the government of india has not taken any stand on the concerns of environment and this is a fact because technically speaking we have not done that much research but this is all data that we uh, that we have at present is based upon several countries like nepal china kosovo who have banned the mining of cryptocurrency because of constant use of electricity even china has banned mining of cryptocurrency so we are technically not yet with stati statistical data how we are going to deal with some certain concepts of crypto mining therefore we do not have a regularization over it but in order to make the people aware that the government does have a, a look upon your funds they have taxed it at 30% so if you today if you hold 100 bitcoins uh, as in that will be a huge amount so if you say that you hold 100 crypto coins you will pay 30% to the government as taxes irrespective of whether they are gifted to you irrespective of whether their value has increased automatically due to market or irrespective of the fact that you initially had 150 coins and their value has decreased to 100 the coins that you hold you will have to pay the tax of 30 percent now another there is no clear picture whether cess or surcharge will be applied which comes to 12 percent so basically out of the 100 coins that you are holding 42 percent will go to the government so now one question then again arises as we discussed the salient feature of a cryptocurrency is the non-involvement of third party and government but if the government is now taxing it that means there is an involvement of government now it is no longer encrypted currency it becomes a co as in a regularized currency now once it becomes a regularized currency then why you are using it as a cryptocurrency it has become more like a share so it is like a gold that people used to exchange as currency and now cryptocurrency the use will eventually become a commodity as a stock market what difference does it make so the taxation policy of the government of india has taken away the sole power of the encryption theory it is no longer a cryptocurrency that question we have to ask to ourselves as a lawyer now regularization if the moment the government introduce a bill of regularizing the cryptocurrency the very meaning of crypto is electronically private discrete privacy that will go so where where are we taking this concept of cryptocurrency it it goes in a black perspective where there is no picture is clear no picture is white so that clarity is not there so we have to ask ourselves whether we should invest in such a concept or not so that is upon our personal choices uh, ma'am can we move to the next slide please yeah so now in my conclusion i am not here to promote the cryptocurrencies i am not here to provoke people to sell their cryptocurrencies it is your absolute personal choice to hold the currency i am not here to do any sort of advertisements uh, fortunately bharti vidya pit new law college uh, environmental sale has also not given me any sort of money to promote or to provoke you to either invest or sell of your currencies so this is absolutely in a perspective of environment that is why i said earlier we as humans of our contribution towards the sustainable growth because the generations that would be coming after us have to have some things in their hand to grow from there if we do not do, uh, do that then we are killing this globe and there as i said earlier we are just tenants here without a valid time of departure with any fixed time of departure and as lawyers we should ask ourselves if what what we can do to contribute towards the environment and if law and environment weren't going hand in hand there wouldn't have been an environmental law 
now why uh, now if this is as i already told you that uh, why this is a dangerous concept of mining and everything using of resources such as electricity if it wouldn't have been that serious then iran kosovo china nepal russia turkey and vietnam wouldn't have banned cryptocurrency as in mining of cryptocurrencies so uh, at the end of the day we have to ask our own selves the question why and for whom and for what because we as humans owe responsibility to the world we reside in and uh, our ancestors have left something for us that is why we are here now we have the responsibility and the almighty has given us whichever god you believe he has given us this opportunity to keep something for the next generation so we have to ask ourselves why and for whom and for what so i thank you everybody giving me this opportunity to conclude my lecture and uh, thank you ujwala vindale ma'am uh, it was really amazing that you gave me this opportunity to speak on a platform such as bharti vidyapeeth and thank you jyoti dharma ma'am thank you jayashree ma'am and uh, thank you advocate karishma patil they gave me this opportunity to enlighten the students because every time she keeps on asking me the question as to should we buy a cryptocurrency my one question is to her as long as i am getting that gold coin yes if not i have not interested <laughs> thank you thank you thank you mata as a young and dynamic uh, advocate of this new generation so you rightfully and very ably explained us as to what is the concept of this uh, cryptocurrency uh, sir in this uh, amazing and um, enlightening session sir we've received some questions which uh, yes. uh, which surely require your kind attention sir so with yes, your permission please. if you could begin yes please yes thank you uh, so the life trade monitoring work traffic has mm-hmm. highlighted that uh, the um, the killing of certain endangered species has increased substantially because of the emergence of cryptocurrency when seen in the light of dark web sir what are your views on this thing uh see if you are aware about the sparrow revolution that took place in china i believe you all might be knowing about it uh after usa became the supreme power initially it was united kingdom and china wanted to be the super power in the entire world so what they did their uh, experts came to a conclusion that uh, the farming sector in china 20% of which was consumed by fleas insects and sparrows so they introduced this sparrow revolution what they do did they started killing the sparrows they started introducing uh, gifts on killing of sparrows they started uh, engaging uh, competitions they started engaging activities among students students used to kill sparrows it is a fact that around 20 crore sparrows were killed in that sparrow evolution and how it infected china it infected in such a way that the food chain of china was disturbed there were snakes in entire china there were rats there were fleas people had stopped killing insects they were focusing only on sparrows because that that is how the uh, as in competitions were held you broke the biological food chain of a uh, as in this biological concept of this world whatever almighty has given us so once you play with the environment the environment is going to play with you if we tomorrow if we run out of all the resources this is no doubt definitely going to destroy humans because there will be no electricity nothing to operate but then the another thing is by the time the, we run out of all the resources we would have polluted the entire globe with carbon dioxide which is going to be dangerous to all the species all the living beings irrespective of who it is animals whoever it is there has to be a balance there has to be a limit there has to be a concept concept of sustainable growth now every company law whoever is engaged into industrial aspects will have a chapter on this of sustainable growth why that chapter is included there and why that chapter is largely spoken into environment law is the very reason that somewhere we have to draw the line of limit 
Now, unless and until we do not do that, we all have set up the explanation ex examples set up by China. Uh, if if you can take out time, do watch a documentary on the Sparrow Revolution in China. You will get your answers. Quite right, sir. Quite right. Uh, so just a follow up to that particular question, sir. Uh, what exactly is the meaning of dark web, and how mm. does it facilitate the concept mm. of cryptocurrency? Uh, as I said, the very meaning of cryptocurrency is an encryption. what goes in what comes out everything is untraceable the moment the theory of dark web comes that means no location is traced no data is traced no third party involvement is engaged i believe the very answer lies in the very name of that concept dark web yes sir thank you very much sir uh, so the next question so the united nations department of economic and social affairs on the 1st of february 2018 uh, it highlighted the down the risks which cryptocurrency entails with yeah. skewed economic development with skewed economic yeah. prosperity to only those who tend to be miners who tend to be dealing with cryptocurrency sir how far do you agree with this particular assertion uh see as i have already covered entire administration of this government working procedure works on taxes that it receives from the people the government is surely engaged into uh, putting more and more currency in their economy but as you already know the more currency that is going in, in inside the market that is going to hammer your economic concerns of a country if tomorrow this cryptocurrency without having any engagement involvement of a government non taxable transactions keep on happening and no funds are diverted to the government how will a government work that is the question and so eventually now if we are focusing only on the people who are buying the cryptocurrency and we absolutely uh, move the concept from the general public who are not aware about the crypto law and who are not buying it it is going to hammer their pockets if people paid their taxes on time if all the people paid their taxes on time the taxable amounts of all the citizens will be distributed equally but then this crypto uh, uh, persons who are engaged in cryptocurrency dealings they are not paying the taxes that means who is bearing the burden again the taxpayer who is absolutely unaware about this concept and the government keeps on taxing because they have to run the government so uh, it is rightly said and it is also i guess the data that you have discussed it, it also has the mention that cryptocurrency has the capacity and power to destroy governments and bring down the countries on its toes so i agree with that the uh, opinion quite right sir quite right yeah. uh, sir uh, there is one more question uh, relating yeah. to the energy use of uh, while mining cryptocurrencies yeah. uh, so the question is uh, can we replace gpu computers with analog computers as a substitute because analog computers tend to use less of energy and hence would facilitate greater mining for a longer duration of time see uh, once again now that is exactly why at the end of the conclusion i kept that question for what and why so you have to as in ask your conscience why can we not sustain without the cryptocurrency are we in a state where digital currency would not work that questions are to be asked to us as in uh, as long as you are saying that the ex, uh, as in uh, another resource of energy could be used for uh, crypto mining the question is still going to remain why waste energy for a coin of 30 lakhs are you imagining how many computers are acting what cost of one computer approximately to do the crypto mining is somewhere around 1.50 lakhs imagine a farm of 100 computers you are investing over 1.50 crores in a farm for taking a coin of rupees 30 lakhs 
then you are buying the gpu the high standards gpu whose cost is somewhere around 57 58 000s and above i forget about thousands now it is gone in lakhs now if you are uh, follow, closely following the news channel also the vehicles that are being made and the info system they have they are lacking the chips because these chips are actively used in crypto mining It, this is what we have to ask for one coin of cryptocurrency for example you are investing 1.50 crores as in it is like this you want to win a lottery of rupees 100 you buy 10 tickets of rupees 10 <laughs> where is this going now this foolish aspect we are playing with ourselves is like i am buying 20 tickets of 10 rupees to win a lottery of 100 rupees these calculations need to be ex explained to the general public so i don't think so much difference would take place if even if we change it with another uh, electronic source because see at the end of the day it is a resource resources on this planet are limited the governments now have started to address the concerns of population so i believe you <laughs> can know that you know the theory where we are leading quite right sir quite right yeah. uh, so we are actually flooded with a lot of questions but i guess we have space for just one more question sir yeah. uh, sir uh, keeping in mind the burning of bitcoins the phenomenon of yeah. burning yeah. of yeah. Uh, bitcoins yeah. sir can you explain uh, further the the role which technologies like deep learning can play in mm -hmm. burning of bitcoins See, as well as the blockchain mm -hmm. technology which uh, which tends to be the riding force behind it uh see the blockchain technology as in from a legal perspective i've already shared that the how it works it works as in every block having a one mba data uh, it shares the ledger imagine one mba data is shared in one block a chain of blocks is created and every block will have its unique hash value now all this mathematical aspect i believe it will not be right on behalf of myself to explain the entire concept of blockchain technology because it will eventually be an expert it expert can explain that concept of how blockchain exactly works and how it is tracked but at the end of the day the concern will remain that when you are giving a free hand to this cryptocurrency as in whoever this owner is because as i said the shareholders are the owners you want to maintain the strategy in the business strategical data of demand and supply if more and more people start buying cryptocurrency more and more value it will have if people eventually stop demanding that cryptocurrency the value of cryptocurrency will reduce now if the value of cryptocurrency is reduced because there is lesser supply and higher demand there uh, sorry le uh, lesser demand and higher supply the cryptocurrency shareholders will have to cut short their supply to meet the demand as in if there is only a demand of 10 bitcoins and you are sup in supply of 20 bitcoins you will burn 15 bitcoins to maintain the balance that your coin does not lose its value now this is legal this is legal creating a false wallet and investing that amount in those wallet burning it because those coins will not be circulated anymore so this 2.10 crore bitcoins that will be circulated in the market includes the burned coins but which will not be used so this automatically increases the people's value so this is a business strategy like a stock market and it is valid and if if i uh, as in i roughly remember it was ethereum i guess they burned down around 10 crores of coins cryptocurrency coins 2 years ago to meet the value so this is a business strategy and it's legalized because that is how the market works precisely sir so almost every response to to the questions has uh, enlightened us with a newer facet of uh, cryptocurrency and bitcoins sir with this we now come to the end of the qna session may i now request anshika to kindly proceed to the vote of thanks thank you yash indeed it was an enlightening session and every word was an eye opener for all of us now we shall proceed with the word of thanks
As all good things come to an end in life, so has this webinar. On behalf of Bharti Vidya Peet, deemed to be University, New Law College Pune's environment cell, I take this opportunity to propose the vote of thanks to those who have directly or indirectly contributed to this webinar. At the outset, I would like to fondly remember our founder, Chancellor, Dr. Patangrao Kadamso, because, whose, because of whose blessings, this webinar has been a great success. I would also like to thank Advocate Pushkar Patel, sir, for his enlightening words. I would also like to thank Honorable Advocate Rajendra Umar uh, for being with us. Further, I would like to thank our Honorable Dean and Principal, Dr. Ujwala Bendale, ma'am, Head of Environment Cell, Dr. Jyoti Dharma, ma'am, and faculty coordinator of the environment cell, Dr. Jeshi Khandare Man, who have been the pillars of support in all our endeavors. A special thanks to the organizing committee, that is the environment cell, teaching and non-teaching staff for their unflinching support and coordination. A heartfelt thanks to all the students for their active participation during the entire webinar. With these warm words and a kind message, we now move towards the end of this webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It is request to all the members, please on your camera so that we can have online photographs. Right. So it is a humble request to all the Bindali Madam. Aditya. Yes, thank you all. Uh, thank you, Pushkar, sir. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you very much for enlightening us with a very interesting and a new topic for us. Yes, thank you, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm.